CO2 levels now are officially higher than they've been in three million years. Three million years is 10 times longer than humans have been in our modern form alive on this planet. Michael Mann breaks it down for us along with some fascinating information about weather changes. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, and subscribe to our channel. Weather is killing people all over the planet. Um, the CO2 levels are apparently higher than in the last three million years. On the line with us is Dr. Michael Mann, Distinguished Professor of Meteorology and the Director of the Earth System Science Center at Penn State University, recipient of this year's Nobel Prize for the Environment, the Tyler Prize for Environmental Achievement, the author of numerous books, including most recently The Madhouse Effect, How Climate Change Denial is Threatening Our Planet, Destroying Our Politics, and Driving Us Crazy. His website, michaelmann.net, and you can tweet him at Michael E. Mann with two N's. Uh, Dr. Mann, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Tom. Always good to be with you. It is always great having you with us. So uh, CO2 levels higher than in 3 million years, really? Yeah, we're uh, over 410 parts per million CO2 in the atmosphere. The pre-industrial level was about 280 parts per million CO2 in the atmosphere. If we continue on the course that we're on, if we do not curtail our burning of fossil fuels, uh, we will more than double CO2 concentration sometime later this century relative to pre-industrial times. And using ice cores and other means of evidence to extend the record back in time, we know now that the current level is unprecedented literally in millions of years. And if we continue on the course that we're on, we will reestablish CO2 concentration that you have to go back almost 100 million years to find naturally. So we're engaged in an uncontrolled and unprecedented experiment with the one planet that we know that can support us and other life. That is breathtaking. Um, I, uh, one of the, one, I, I was having a conversation with a, a friend of mine who's a political consultant uh, last week, and um, I said, you know, with regard to climate, we need to find our Kate Steinel. Um, the, uh, anybody who watches Fox News can tell you that Kate Steinel is the, uh, you know, the white woman in San Francisco who was killed by a, a quote, illegal alien. And the, the right wing sphere just exploded this thing and they pounded on it for like a year. And, um, you know, the old, the old uh, saw that a million people dying is a statistic, but one person dying, if you know the details, is a tragedy. I'm, and, and, and his response to me was, you know, we need to find a Kate Steinel who's the victim of climate change. Uh, I just wanted to put that uh, uh, thought in your mind. I don't know if you have a specific suggestion off the top of your head right now, but we are seeing the, this, these bomb cyclones. We're seeing now this new thing, a sting jet. The Washington Post writing about this today. Um, violent weather is killing people in ways that it hasn't in the past. Or, or, is, this, or is this, you know, just old weather that has a new name? Yeah, no, I mean, we've seen thousands of people perish in unprecedented extreme weather events that simply would not have happened in the absence of climate change, which is not to say that the meteorological event would have happened, but it would not have been an unprecedented wildfire or an unprecedented flood or an unprecedented heat wave. And we have seen them writ large around the planet uh, over the last uh, decade and, and beyond, we're, we're seeing unprecedented extreme weather events that have been made more extreme by climate change. You add sea level rise to these landfalling hurricanes um, that uh, yield unprecedented amounts of rainfall because a warmer atmosphere holds more moisture. Uh, you get the sorts of flooding events that literally are killing thousands of people in Africa. Uh, recently, there were more than a thousand victims of that landfalling hurricane that struck Africa last month. Uh, and these things are happening uh, around the world. And climate change is taking a huge toll, not just in damage, uh, literally uh, trillions of dollars worth of damage now, but in human life. The toll taken in human lives that are lost to extreme events that just would not have been that extreme and damaging in the absence of our warming of the planet. Now, if, our, if, if the CO2 level, actually, before we get to that, um, bomb cyclone. I, you know, bomb cyclone is not a phrase that I grew up with. It's not a phrase that I think I'd ever heard before the last year or three. Um, what is a bomb cyclone? Uh, what is a stinger? And why should we, wh why do we need to know about this? Yeah, well, a stinger, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is something that you find on a bumblebee or a wasp. Uh, and I'm not sure of the meteorological context. You'll have to tell me more about that one. Um, but these bomb cyclones are sort of what they sound like. They're cyclones 
that intensify extremely rapidly, uh, not tropical cyclones and hurricanes, but these are mid-latitude storm systems, the sorts of storm systems that regularly come across the United States and impact us um, uh, weather-wise. Uh, these systems are becoming more intense, uh, in part because of the same factor that is intensifying uh, hurricanes and tropical storms. In this case, this particular mid-latitude cyclone encountered huge amounts of moisture that were coming off the Gulf of Mexico, a very warm Gulf of Mexico providing lots of moisture. That moisture was entrained into this mid-latitude storm, and that was part of what gave it so much energy and allowed it to intensify so rapidly. And it's part of what gave it so much rainfall. And that rainfall combined with snowfall that melted uh, soon after the storm passed again, to give us an unprecedented flooding event in the Midwest. Now, weather events like this have happened in the past, but they haven't become unprecedented flooding events in the past, as they are now because of the added ingredient that is fueling the intensification of these storms and the amounts of uh, rainfall and snowfall they provide the warming of the planet. Yeah. The stinger, I, I guess it was called the sting jet, is how the uh, Washington Post referred to it. Uh, in, a, in a piece about this bomb cyclone in the East Coast weather. In fact, the, uh, the headline was uh, sting, had a had sting jet in it. And, and what they pointed out was that the bomb cyclone, um, on one little corner of it, had this little piece that kind of came out like a stinger and kind of curved around like the tip of a saw, you know, the, th the things that you harvest wheat with. And uh, that in that little piece, there was just this explosive wind force and they talked about how there had been one of these that was associated with the bomb cyclone over the UK a year or two ago, and it killed like 22 people. People were completely unready for it. Um, the meteorologists who were who were correctly anticipating the bomb cyclone were not. They didn't even have into their equations or whatever this this sting jet that was associated. And another one had formed in this thing over the United States. Is that familiar to you? Yeah. Well, I thought a sting jet was uh, something that the former lead. Uh, singer of the band Police uh, flies around. In. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't heard these terms before, but I can yeah. tell you what it sounds like it's describing. Um, you get what are known as shortwave disturbances, um, which are uh, fairly small-scale cyclonic disturbances that can combine with a developing storm and provide it extra energy and extra moisture and rainfall and snowfall. And uh, the intensification of these smaller scale features can be favored by the same sorts of basic factors that intensify storms in general. Large contrasts in temperature, uh, which you have uh, with a warming Gulf of Mexico and, and cold air outbreaks that still happen in the winter, they meet a warmer Gulf um, and you have larger temperature contrasts. Those larger temperature contrasts can lead to the intensification of, of a, a cyclonic disturbance. And what was amazing about the bomb cyclone, it was in a sense uh, a perfect storm, uh, not to overuse that metaphor, but a number of things had to come together in a fairly complicated way, and the models actually predicted that this would happen about a week out. It was an amazing success story for our models, which are not to be taken lightly. Our, our weather forecasting models are becoming increasingly powerful, and of course, the climate models that we use to understand the impacts of human activity on weather patterns have proven similarly prophetic in terms of the things that we predicted and the things that are actually playing out that we're seeing right. happening. So while petrobillionaire funded Republicans are ridiculing climate change, we're actually seeing this in real time all across the world and we're actually seeing human beings die as a consequence of it. Um, over the next decade, over the next uh, even five to 10 years, how much different is our weather going to get? It seems to me that in the last, really the last 15 years or so, I mean, I started doing this show 15 years ago, and we were starting to see more severe thunderstorms. I was living in Vermont at the time, but it, it wasn't the stuff that everybody talks about. Now it seems to be the new norm, um, extreme weather. How quickly is this happening? Are we looking at, is, is this beyond linear, the, the, the increase in this? What should we anticipate? Yeah, well, linear is bad enough because linear, you keep on going. Yeah. Um, and that's the work here, right, that there isn't a new normal, that um, we might think that we need to acclimate to uh, these uh, more prevalent extreme weather disasters, but they'll become more extreme and they'll become more common if we continue on the course that we're on. So there's no reason 
not to suspect that if we continue to pump greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and warm up the planet, that somehow these uh, events won't become more frequent and, and, and more extreme. They will. And the only way to prevent that, of course, is by solving the problem at its source, stopping the continued reliance on fossil fuels and the continued pumping of carbon pollution into the atmosphere. Right. And then uh, aren't we now, if, we're, if, if we've you know, passed a three million year point in terms of CO2 in the atmosphere, don't we need to st start talking about decarbonization e also, even if it's entirely using natural processes like regeneration of forests and grasslands? Yeah, in fact, I signed my name to a letter that appeared in The Guardian uh, the other day, um, uh, uh, co-signed by uh, George Monbiot and a number of other, uh, Bill McKibben, uh, Greta Thunberg, um, this amazing young girl who's been changing our entire conversation about climate change and drawing attention to this uh, crisis. Um, we, we signed on to a letter that said we have to do those things. We need to um, you know, restore uh, forests and uh, ecosystems to a natural state that better allows them to play the key role they play here, absorbing carbon out of the atmosphere. That's part of the solution. But, of course, that effort will be for naught. Um, that, that effort will be futile if we don't stop the worsening of this problem, which is the continued burning of fossil fuels.